Hello, this is Andrew Ford. Today we're going to make a bounce or inertia expression. Here I have this logo I pulled from Envato Elements. As you can see, we could have it simply come into the screen with position keyframes, but why not give it a little pizzazz with an expression? I like to use sliders to control the values in my expression. So what I'm going to do is select the layer and add three slider controls to this layer. I'm going to rename them. The first one, Amplitude the second one frequency, and the third one decay. These are going to be used in our bounce expression. We'll option click or all click on the position stopwatch on our layer to add an expression. First we'll assign the variables. We'll do amp for amplitude and pick whip up to the amplitude slider. I will do the same for frequency and the same for decay. Then after that, we'll paste in our expression, which is pretty involved, but you could just copy and paste it from the text accompanying this video. And now we need to add values to our sliders for the expression to work. So first we will change the amplitude value. Now amplitude is how much bounce there is. And this value is very, very touchy. You need a really low value here. Something like 0.02 would be fine. Frequency is how frequently the bounce happens. We'll try two here. And decay is kind of like friction or how long the bounce lasts. Uh, we'll try four here. A higher value makes the bounce last less. Let's play our timeline now and see what we have. And we have a nice little bounce effect there, an inertia or snapback as some may call it. Just so you can see what these values do, I will raise the slider to 10 on decay. And now you'll see that there is more friction and there's hardly any bounce back. If we put it to one, you see this bounce will last a longer time. Let's set that back to four where it was and we'll look at amplitude. Remember I said this is touchy. So even just making a value of one, watch what happens, your first bounce is off the screen. I recommend being very frugal with your amplitude value. We'll set that back to 0.02. Now frequency is how frequently the bounce happens. Let's try 10 and you'll see we get a lot of bounces in that period of time. Let's set that back to two. And as we scrub through the animation, you can see that maybe we could add a little rotation as the logo is getting to the center. We can apply this bounce expression to other attributes. So let's copy it from the position attribute and paste it in rotation. And now we'll just add a couple keyframes. Let's uh, make it just rotate a little bit. Let's try 10 degrees here and then go back to zero. And now our inertia expression will be applied to rotation. Now, since we're using the same sliders, the values will be the same as we used in position. But if you wanted more or less change, you could either make additional sliders and link those to the expression or add math to modify your value in the expression, such as multiplying or adding additional numbers. So after playing around with that, I like that it's subtle. And we can also apply this to the scale attribute. So let's alt click on Windows or option click on a Mac, the scale stopwatch and paste in our expression. We will again set keyframes. Let's make it scale 50 at the beginning. Just try 120 or so in the middle here and we'll make it end at 100. And you can adjust that accordingly, but you get the idea. So this obviously enhances the look of your effect. Instead of having straight movements that end abruptly or even using the ease in, ease out keyframes, this adds a nice soft bounce, gives a look of the motion having inertial properties, and this just adds a little bit of realism to your effect. This is the same type of a principle used when animating a bouncing ball on the floor. So have fun being creative with this effect. Thank you.